When I was a child, I was obsessed with Sailor Moon. Magic powers, a talking cat, fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by daylight. That show had it all. I dreamed of being a Sailor Scout. I was Sailor Mercury for Halloween one year. I saved fan art in a folder on my computer. I wrote a multi-chapter Sailor Sun fan fiction, and I read through multiple GeoCities pages to examine theories on why there was no Sailor Earth. I was in deep. FYI, there wasn't a Sailor Earth because Tuxedo Mask, as the Prince of Earth, fulfilled that function. When I inevitably discovered that the Deke cartoon that I had been watching was not the original show, it was the most shocking thing to happen in my young life. It gave me lingering trust issues. You mean there was a version that showed the Sailor Scouts corpses in the season one finale? A brainwashed Prince Darian kicks Sailor Moon in the stomach? Amara and Michelle weren't cousins? But I discovered the Japanese anime and ultimately the original manga, which was even darker than the anime. I loved it. I also learned that in Japan, the original anime and the manga were released simultaneously. The creator, Naoko Takeuchi, had initially only planned on writing the singular story arc that became the first season. But Sailor Moon was just so popular that her publisher pushed her to continue the series. However, she needed some time to write the next story arc. So they had a bit of a Game of Thrones situation on their hands. The TV show had caught up with all of the available published material. So in order to buy Naoko enough time to write the Black Moon story arc, the showrunners came up with their own original storyline. It was the 13 episode Makai Tree, Doom Tree slash Cardian series. Season two started with Sailor Moon, the Sailor Senshi, and Tuxedo Mask all suffering from amnesia following the events, i.e. their deaths, at the end of season one. And in a repeat of the first season, Sailor Moon gets awoken first, and then the Sailor Senshi get their memories back in episode two, and then in episode three, we meet the Moonlight Knight. I am known as the Moonlight Knight. When the time is right, we will be able to talk. I look forward to that day. Adieu. Not to be confused with Marvel's Moon Knight, although that would be a pretty interesting crossover. Instead of a masked man who appears at a critical battle moment to throw a red rose and say some encouraging words, we get this guy. Who are you? I am the white wind that brings color to the darkness. I am the moonlight knight. He throws a white rose and recites like a bad poem. It's a wonderful night for admiring the beauty of flowers. Cherry blossoms are so short-lived. I won't let you and your filthy hands misuse them. But this guy? L look at him! They needed to come up with a completely independent storyline, and this is what they made. This guy. He's dressed like a character out of a bad Arabian Nights high school play. He carries a scimitar, although his facial covering is very COVID appropriate. Weekends are when families should be enjoying time together. I can't allow monsters to ruin that special moment. What does this mean? 
In a corner of the silent expanse of the universe, there is a planet that plays a lovely melody. That planet is our Earth. What? What does any of this mean? What is he even saying? A child understands. A whole lifetime of caring and dear mother's love. Why is he like this? No one knows my true identity, but all young girls know who I am. What a weird guy. The Moonlight Knight is clearly Tuxedo Mask, but he is also not Tuxedo Mask. Whoa! Let go! What's going on? You know perfectly well what's going on. Don't act so surprised. B but I am surprised. How is it you even know my name? Mamoru still seems to not remember Usagi. He finds her weird and he rejects her advances, which really upsets her because she remembers their epic love story. Maybe this will help. Once upon a time, there was an Earth Prince named Endymion. I also don't get why Luna wouldn't just at least try to bring his memories back, but... Like, I'm not a talking cat, so what do I know? My initial assumption was that the Moonlight Knight emerged when Mamoru was asleep. That it was the same guy, just a divergent personality, or some type of sleepwalking scenario. Oh great, now another weirdo's appeared. But then, in episode four, we see Mamoru and the Moonlight Knight in the same place at the same time. Let me just say, I admire your courage, but no mortal human is a match for them. Whoa. Even in battle, your friendship glowed beautifully. Adieu. Adieu. Is he French? I should have been watching this in the original Japanese, just subtitled, because I wonder what he actually said in that version. Like, how funny would it have been if he just said, bye, in English, or something like that? The way he leaves by saying adieu, he's just like the guy who broke my heart. Uh, your old boyfriend used to say adieu? Wait a minute, so he was French? <sighs> I just mean he was like that. As it turns out, the Moonlight Knight is a manifestation of Mamoru's subconscious that wanted to continue to protect Usagi despite the memory loss. Now is the time I will reveal my true identity to you. <gasps> And then, when the story arc is complete, he merges back into Mamoru, and the plot, once again, continues in alignment with the manga. But the Moonlight Knight very clearly had a physical form. His scimitar really cuts. The Cardian was able to physically grab and restrain him. In the manga, Mamoru has powers that we don't see in the anime. It's nothing like this, but he's got some psychic abilities and he's also got the power to heal. So this wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility for the manga character, but they never set up anything like this ability in the anime. Why is this what Mamoru's subconscious manifested? Why not a prince? Or like, an actual knight? Why not make the Moonlight Knight an actual knight in shining armor? Because that seems like it would be more representative of Prince Endymion than this guy. So what does it say about Mamoru that the deepest part of his subconscious wanted to create some sort of hero and he made this? Once beyond the tunnel of frustration, there is a land of light overflowing with hope. You can overcome any hardship. All you must do is believe in yourself. Maybe he thought that a knight would have been cooler than Tuxedo Mask? And he wanted the Moonlight Knight to be just a little bit worse. So that way Sailor Moon would be super excited when Tuxedo Mask came back. Okay, we also need to talk about how weird 
these episodes are. So I was watching the newer version of the dub on Hulu, and normally I strongly prefer subtitles, and I also find Usagi's voice in the dub to be really grating, but I wanted to be able to multitask while I was watching this, like I wanted to be able to leave the room and kind of move around, so the dub really did seem like the best choice. But some of these lines are just weird. And I don't know if it's the translation, I don't know if it's just hearing them in English, but it's very odd. That green blazer, those pleated pants, that guy's perfect for me. Wow, sounds like my dream man. It's gotta be a dream. Vampires who look like drag queens. Oh, Mamoru, I know a great disco that's near here. Would you like to go there with me? Um, that's an odd offer. Disco died decades ago. <gasps> yeah, if they don't start believing now, they're going to regret it when they grow up and yearn for their lost innocence. These kids are not okay. I should be the one who gets to play Snow White. After all, I do have the biggest boobs out of all of you. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Want to take measurements? So in one episode, Al and An go after kindergartners. And then in the next episode, they go after babies. Human babies are full of life and strong, fresh energy. So our next target is babies. Select a suitable guardian to accomplish our baby energy plan. Also, oh my god, this episode deserves its own video. Okay, so a guardian attacks this nursery and it drains the energy from all of the moms and all of the babies, except for this one baby who is totally fine. So the main characters are at the hospital where all the moms and the babies went. And for whatever reason, the nurse is telling them, like, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with this baby who's still okay because the mom's in the hospital and the dad's away on business and they don't have any family here, so just, we don't know what's going to happen to this baby. And Mamoru, who is there for no reason, just says, I'll take the baby. And they let him. This hospital just lets this strange man take home a baby. What the heck's so scary, Bonhead? There's, well, uh, she's a girl, but has a baby. She does? This is just, why? But we better get his butt covered or he'll catch a cold, huh? Yeah, that's, that's how you catch colds. I love that then later in this season, like, the plot revolves around their child from the future. Like, oh god. Part of me wants to go through this story arc episode by episode and just talk about, like, all of the different weird things that they did. I actually saw a review online of Sailor Moon Crystal that was negative because they didn't include the Doom Tree arc, because it wasn't in the, the original manga, it was made up for the original anime. But this person was disappointed that they didn't get to see all of this again. I can tell that no one in the marketing department at Carvana has ever seen the Doom Tree arc of Sailor Moon. I summon you, Cody and Sebastian, defeat the Sailor Scouts and also get me a great deal on my used vehicle. Boo -doo, boo -boo. 